The femur is the longest bone in the body. We'll be looking at its distal end in the next section. For now, let's look at the features of the proximal end. This is the head of the femur. This is the neck. Since the head is wide and the neck is narrow, the head of the femur can go a long way in this axis and in this axis before bone hits bone. This prominent lump is the greater trochanter, and this one is the lesser trochanter. The greater and lesser trochanters are important muscle insertions. This line, the intertrochanteric line, marks the insertion of a major ligament of the hip joint, which we'll see in a minute. On the back of the femur, this prominent ridge, the intertrochanteric crest, runs from the greater to the lesser trochanter. This broad rough area is the gluteal tuberosity. This rough line running down the shaft of the femur is the linear aspera. Many muscles have their origins or their insertions on the linear aspera, on the gluteal tuberosity, and in this hollow in front of the intertrochanteric crest. We saw the proximal end of the femur in the last section. Now let's look at the distal end. The two smoothly curved surfaces are the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. The deep notch which separates them is the intercondylar notch. Above the two condyles are the epicondyles, lateral and medial. The sharp corner on the medial epicondyle is the adductor tubercle. This prominent ridge is the medial supracondylar line. This one is the lateral supracondylar line. 